I'm not going to say, you can't get this right. I would say, is the audio working? That's a stupid thing to say, isn't it? I'm just going to assume it is. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that the, oh man, I've forgotten something. Anyway, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Um, good. Hello. Good evening. Uh, this is Jonathan Stoyano, uh, plastic surgeon to the stars, doing a live Q and A. If you've got any questions, ask me, and I will answer them. I have got some questions that have been asked already. Lisa's saying good evening on the Facebook. Good evening, Lisa. I'm assuming you can hear me. Uh, I'm just going to assume that, and I'm going to move on because it just looks so unprofessional when you say, can you hear me all the time? So I'm not going to do that because that is not me. It's not how I roll. I'm slick. I'm professional. I know what I'm doing. I'm doing what I know. So um, I'm just rolling on. Now, if you do want to say that you can hear me do that, but if you don't want to say that, that's fine too. I'm going to ca- Thank you, Leonie. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Okay, well, I have got some photos to show, which I'm going to do in a very unprofessional way on Instagram because I'm going to move this camera around uh, because I don't know how to do it on Instagram, but, but I know how to do it on here. Um, good. This is all working loud and clear. It's even getting to Cyprus. My God, the uh, the audio is getting all the way to Cyprus. That is amazing. Um, so let's uh, see what we've got this evening, shall we? Um we have got this question right. Oh no, not I'm not starting with a photo one because I've got the photos ready. What's the arm reduction? We've got arm two arm reduction questions. Anyway, just realized that. So we've got an arm reduction question here, which goes something like this. I've I want arm reduction surgery. I was wondering if you could carry out liposuction at the same time. While I'm answering this question, I am going to get the photos, which I should have got before I started. And I know I started at 7.10. I've started at 7.10 because I was doing a scheduled thing and it wouldn't let me start at 7 because I started to schedule it too soon before 7. Okay. So there you go. So the question is about the arm reduction. Okay. Um, I don't. And this is a bit like, is there a question about thigh lift? Okay, there's not uh, arm reduction of thigh lift is similar things and um, a similar technically similar sort of operations. And some people do liposuck uh, before they excise the skin. They do hev- heavily liposuck the area that they're going to excise, uh, and and then they just excise skin basically because they've liposucked all the fat out. Um, hi, Eat Shop Hinch. <laughs> nice to see you here tonight. Um, so uh, some people do that. So it's a perfectly reasonable question to say, do you do liposuction when you do an arm reduction? Is it an arm? Yeah, I don't. I don't do a liposuction. I cut the fat out. Um, I just cut the wedge of fat out and then, then close it. Because when you liposuck, you don't liposuck the bits of skin that you leave behind. But Or I don't think, well, I guess you better ask someone who liposucks, but... When they liposuck, the I think most people will liposuck the piece of skin that they're removing uh, or the piece of tissue they're removing in order that that's an easier excision then because it's just empty skin. Whereas um, they're not liposucking the bit of skin that's left behind because the bit of skin that's left behind, you need vascularity there to um, make sure the wounds heal properly. So I don't think they would do any significant liposuction to the bit on either sides. So from a technical um, point of view in terms of what you would see uh, in terms of a result, the result will be the same. I think, I mean, I guess you need to speak to someone who does liposuction to see what they would say. But um, I think the results are similar whether you do liposuction. I don't, I just do excision. Uh, However, if you needed liposuction elsewhere in another part of your body or another part of your arm or in your elbow or or commonly with a thigh uh, lift around your knee, you could do liposuction to liposuction those areas. But strictly speaking, for a uh, thigh lift or for an arm reduction, I don't routinely do liposuction. The main thing that I would tell people is if you're uh, looking, and this is a problem with this day and age, everyone gets into the minutiae of the surgery and they start saying this and that. And I would say to you, you need to be more aware of your surgeon than the technique. People are really getting into techniques and like, oh, 
it that way. And I'm like, the a good technique with a bad surgeon is worse. I'm, I'm just is worse than a bad technique with a good surgeon. And with that, that's probably true, isn't it? Or an average, or maybe a good technique with an average surgeon is worse than an average technique with a good surgeon. You get the point anyway. I mean, we don't have to labor this, do we? I think you get the point of the surgeon. <laughs> don't worry too much about liposuction, not liposuction. And if you find that some people do liposuction and some people don't do liposuction, then you've got to realize that there is going to be, you know, it's not necessarily one's doing it wrong. It's just some people have got different ways of doing stuff. There's lots of, especially in plastic surgery, you'll find lots of different ways of doing stuff. And that doesn't mean that anyone's doing it wrong. It's just how we've been trained or how we've developed our practice over time. And um, that is, you know, don't don't worry. Oh, what's happened? Oh, Facebook. Facebook's kicked off. My, uh, I can hear you, but it's a secret, says, um, thank you, Olivia. My arm wasn't liposucked. Olivia's arm wasn't liposucked. Mia, hi, Jonathan. I'm going tomorrow a bit nervous about this procedure, uh, a bit more nervous about this procedure than the last one, but I know I'm in excellent hands. Uh, Mia, are you sure more nervous? I think the last one was a bigger procedure. We don't want to get in amongst the people, what procedures we're doing, but don't be nervous, Mia, because if you start getting nervous, you'll make me nervous and no one wants that. Um, here we go, Lisa. What we got? What about liposuction on outside? Yes, so Lee, good, thank you, uh, Lisa. So, for instance, so I say that uh, tummy tuck is sorry, uh, arm reduction is similar to thigh uh, lift. So, similarly, with a thigh lift, I don't routinely liposuck that uh, tissue that you are closing with a thigh lift, and when you're doing a thigh lift, you are closing the uh, tissue on the inner aspect of the thigh in the same way as the inner aspect of the arm. And so, as I say, you can liposuck other areas. So um, Lisa's saying, what about liposuction on the outer thigh to give a better contour? Yes, you can liposuck the outer thigh. The outer thigh responds well to liposuction. So if you're contouring a thigh, the outer thigh is a good place for liposuction. The hips, the flanks are good places for liposuction. The inner thigh is not a good place for liposuction because the thick the skin of the inner thigh is much thinner than the skin of the outer thigh, so it doesn't recoil as well as the skin of the outer thigh. So if you liposuck the inner thigh only, um, uh, you are left with redundant skin. So liposuction as a sole procedure is not good for the inner thigh. That's why the thigh lift exists, because that cuts the skin out. But it is good for the outer thigh. So if you were uh, wanting the whole thigh uh, contoured, you could have a, a cure for thigh lift and liposuction to the outer thigh. Often patients who need a thigh lift have lost a lot of weight. And if you've lost a lot of weight, often the outer thighs will 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 be better. So um, it's not a common thing to do that. But anyway, thigh lift's not a common thing to do anyway. But um, um, hi again. Hold on a minute. What's going on? Uh, too many surgery forums. Uh, hi again. Is it you who perform surgery on people or is there more surgeons? Um, believe it or not, Kelly, it, this guy here actually does surgery on people. Um, I do do surgery on people. Uh, at the clinic, there are more surgeons. So um, we do have other surgeons at the clinic who work with me. We work together in harmony. So you could see any of us or, um, or well, that's it. You could see any of us. But um, feel good face. I'm surprised the thigh lift isn't that common. Uh, well, yeah, well, what? No, it isn't that common, feel good, um, because the th scars really. Um, well, two things the scars are either really obvious, they go down the medial aspect of your thigh, so you can't wear shorts. Because a lot of people say, I want a thigh lift because I, I can't wear shorts. You can give a big scar down the thigh, they still can't wear shorts. Or if you hide the scar up in the groin, it doesn't give a very good thigh lift. So, um, it's like, what do you do? Do you either have a scar that's hidden so you can wear shorts, but if the scar thigh lift's not a very good thigh lift, uh, and the problem with it, feel good, is that it's expensive surgery and there's risks of complications. So you're not going to want to take on expensive surgery with risks of complications if you don't get a decent or a significant result. 
So for that reason, it's a tricky one, or at least in my practice, practice is a tricky one. And we often have conversations where we're like, um, you know, is it um, is it worth doing? Because, you know, where do you go? Bad scar, but better tighter skin or good scar, but it's not very tight skin. No scar and not tight skin at all. Not great options there, is it? Um, Olivia, what's the difference between an extended thigh lift? Is it just there's lots? Of, Olivia, what's your extended thing? Were you going on about the extended tummy tucks last week? What's this extended? What, what's going on? Extended? What's an extended thigh lift? I've got no idea, Olivia. I mean, you can combine a thigh lift with a tummy tuck. I don't know. Is an extended thigh lift a thing? I don't know, Olivia. Are you making it up? I think you might be making this up. Extended this, extended that. I don't know, Olivia. I don't know what an extended thigh lift is. You wouldn't want to go below the knee. Um, you want to keep the scar above the knee. You don't want to cross a joint with a scar if you can avoid it. So I can't see how you can extend a thigh lift. Goodness me. How do you extend a thigh lift? Answers on a postcard. Anyone know? Um, uh, guess it's how bad it affects you. Scars tell a story. Nice. Scars tell a story. What should we expect? Is that... Um, should I... Is that the right knob? No. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> Let sleeping dogs lie. Uh, what should we expect when meeting someone for initial consultation for a breast reduction? Ooh, nice question. Um, I'll tell you what to expect, Leone. Um, what you should expect, Leone. What should I do with this? Because I'm, I'm answering a question with how do i get that there what we, i would expect um leone is uh you will have a conversation with that person who will give you a, who will try and get an idea of what sort of result you're looking for what sort of size guide on what sort of size although to be honest with you the breast reduction it's always a bit we can't be too specific about size but anyway have a chat with you about what sort of outcome you're looking for uh have a well, I'm telling you everything that I do, so I'm not sure if this is something that, you know, you could, I'll just tell you what I do, shall I? So I have a chat with you about what to expect. Um, talk through your medical history if you have any medical problems or, or any medical issues. We'll examine you so you can expect them to examine you. It's usually pretty quick, the examination. There's not an awful lot you need to do uh, with the examination. You just need to have a, an idea of the proportions of the breast. You, make, you have to make some measurements uh, of the breast, but it's hopefully, I know, I know people often uh, don't feel comfortable with that Thing with that part of it but it's usually um, not, not uh, prolonged and then um, what I would do is talk to you about the scarring involved showing some photographs of the scarring involved then it's also explain to you what to expect in terms of the um, post-op um, recovery after the breast reduction not only in terms of your wound healing and your ability to get back into work and get back into the gym etc but also in terms of the shape of the breast because they're they're often the shape often looks a bit strange when you first have it done so it's important to be aware of that and then it sort of settles and then uh, when it settles to be to be aware that you have a bit of a concavity in the upper pole which i always say is a natural breast shape but to be aware that it doesn't stay full it starts very full to start with then it settles if you want fullness up there vas implants so that doesn't really come with uh with a breast reduction it goes to a natural breast shape so the breast is lifted as part of a breast reduction but it then settles to a more natural shape that's what i would expect and then you have that conversation and then you uh, what i think you can also expect is no pressure to proceed uh, you can all, you know, given the options to think about things, the options to ask questions, the time, the space to ask questions, and also the time to get uh, to come back at the surgeon if you have any questions when you go away or if anything crops up once you do your research. I think those are the things to expect. So reasonable expectation of what sort of aftercare and, and um, post-op recovery you can have and what uh, is going to happen with the shape. Um, yeah. So um, what's going on? Is it you? I've got a call with you tomorrow. Lisa, I am looking forward to it already. I am look, I'm so looking forward to that. So I look forward to speaking tomorrow. Sorry, have I asked if I said this already? What's I've done that already? Galaxy, I swallowed, I swallowed, I swallowed my ring. Um, okay. 
Uh, well, I think if you swallowed your ring, I think, I mean, it's not my field, this, but happy to, happy to, um, you know, delve into other areas. I think if you've swallowed a ring, I think if it's sort of got past, you know, this bit and it's got into your stomach, it should get all the way, I think. So um, you might want to sieve your, uh, you know, sieve your, sieve your stools. <laughs> Um, just go through them if you want to get the ring back, but I think you should be all right if you've, um, if, if, if you, as long as you're not choking on it, if you're choking on it, then you should call, um, call for help. That's good. Branching out, branching out. Michelle, is that you? Wow. You look, I, you look different, Michelle. Um, I've lost 16.8 stone. Don't 16.8 stone. Now you did my tummy tuck. I know I did, Michelle. I remember you very well, Michelle. It was in Joywich, wasn't it? In Joywich. Anyway, um, and I'm looking for thigh and arm lift now. Only one place and only one person. And that's you, Jonathan. Amazing in safe hands. <laughs> do you know that, people? It, Michelle, you look unrecognizable. Congratulations on the weight loss. Um, be happy to see you and happy to talk about thighs and arms. And um, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that's kind. Thank you. It's sort of endorse what you want. Uh, you, uh, Instagram, that's happening over here. Um, Olivia, I won't mind thigh scar better than the skin. Well, that's the thing. If that's the case, then I uh, can't wait to lose my awful loose skin on my legs. Yeah, well, that is the thing. I think that's why you have to you have to make people realistic about the expectations. And people who are a candidate for thigh lifts are happy, um, as is the case with most surgery, giving people uh, realistic expectations official colette not just any colette we've got the official one um guys guys the official colette is on uh, instagram right now so let's um it's actually it's actually official colette 85 so official colette is on instagram um so hi official very uh, proud to have you here can i get implants without an uplift following some weight loss i'm natural 36 g cup how much are your consultations two-part question that um official colette if you're 36 g cup i wouldn't have uh i wouldn't have implants i wouldn't have implants uh colette i think if you're 36 g cup exhibit a and you've had weight loss exhibit b that says to me you need a lift or even actually a reduction. Um, I, I get it. If you've lost volume on top, you were thinking you want implants there. But I would say uh, a reduction would be better. And a reduction does give you a lift. And um, I would not take on implants. Implants are good at making your breast bigger. That's what they're really good at. And I know that some people will say that implants, well, they don't say it. it's true. Implants do give you more sustained fullness in the upper part of your breast. But I wouldn't personally, I don't really recommend you using implants just for that, just for the fullness in the upper part because they're going to make your breast bigger. So if you're saying, well, you haven't got to say anything about the size, but if you're happy with the size, you either say, well, I've got to accept to be bigger, which is a bit of a not great, uh, or you say, um, or you say, I don't want bigger. You're not the first surgeon to say this. Okay. If you don't want bigger, then you're into that realm of doing a breast reduction and then replacing with implants. Not a good realm to be in. In my view, I shouldn't say that because I know people do it. So I don't want to disrespect the people who do it. If they're getting good results and if they're getting happy patients, then that's absolutely fine. But my view, I don't like the thought, I don't like the concept um, of removing healthy breast tissue and replacing it with an implant with a foreign body. I think if you have to have breasts bigger, it, if you have to have your breasts big, oh, I do want bigger. Sorry, I do want bigger. Um, if you have to have your breasts bigger, okay, that's sort of railroads what I was saying there. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, implants are really good if you want your breasts bigger, and you're just saying you do. I thought, I thought you said you don't. Um, misread that. Okay. Okay, well, you G, and you want to be bigger? Well, I don't know, official collect. I don't know. Um so if you if you've lost volume at the top uh you can use implants to give you back that volume at the top but if you're 30 whatever it was what was it 30 something g 36 g in my head i'm thinking your nipples might be sitting low 
breasts, G cut breasts might be sitting low. They might not, I might be wrong, but they might be sitting low. And if your breasts are sitting low and you just have implants and not a lift, then um, you can get an elongated look at your breasts. It doesn't look good. So um, Donald Trump doesn't look good. Don't look good. So, um, so uh, yeah, tricky one, Colette. That is a tricky one, my friend. Um, on paper, it's a breast reduction with a lift you need, but that's going to make you smaller and you're not going to be happy with that. So you've got to be happy. So what's the answer? I think probably an implant on its own is probably not going to be a goer because I'm imagining your nipples would be sitting low, although I'm imagining that, so I might be totally wrong um, because people say they're G cup and then I see some people and they say they're this cup and I look at them and think, I wouldn't have thought you that cup, you, you know, but they've been measured it and they were so cup sizes can be unpredictable but on the face of it if you're that um yeah i mean the problem colette with that sort of volume with the g cup volume is that um the breasts are gonna be acted on by gra well, g cup and bigger they're gonna be acted on by gravity so if you have an uplift gravity is gonna make them want to go you know go droop again now obviously it will lift them but they will droop again so for a long-lasting result, you want to be smaller. They're not low. I don't think my boobs are that big. How much were your video cons consults? I doing video consults now. Well, we're doing we're doing free calls, Colette. I've stopped doing free calls. So my calls, I do a fifteen-minute call. If you want to chat, it's thirty-five pounds. But really, the consultations are hundred pounds for Kurum, who's the other one of one of the other surgeons who's doing video consultations. Well, he's doing free ones, free 15 minute ones, or 100 pound, 45 minute ones, or I'm doing 200 pound, 45 minute ones, 35 pound, 15 minute ones. So 200 pounds for a 45 minute one, which also includes a in-person consultation. God, I hate talking about money. It feels awkward. Anyway, that's what it is. You asked the question. But um, Colette, I'm not, yeah, it's a tricky one, Colette. The other thing is you can email me or do it like this because it's free like this. Let's not talk money. It's free like this. I think you you're you're a difficult case, Colette, is what I'm saying. Uplift and implants, maybe, but I can't tell you not that you don't want to be bigger because you do want to be bigger. But I can tell you that being bigger can cause problems if you're a G already to have implants would potentially cause problems because you can make them bigger. Gravity south, spend loads and loads of money on getting everything right, and if if they're big and gravity is fighting you, that's the problem. That is a problem. Um, right, I've got a little one that's cropped up on Instagram, which is good. What's going on? Look, this has got, got questions coming out of my ears. I'm not used to this. I am a 30, I am a 32M with zero volume at top. I want a reduction, but do wonder how do you get volume back at the top during surgery? 32M. M. J K L M. 32M. That can't be right. Wow, I've never seen a 32M before. So I wonder wonder how you get volume back at the top during surgery. I must have done a video on this, Leone. Have I done a video on this with you do the surgery? You basically tighten the skin at the bottom, and it's a bit like tailoring. You tighten the skin at the bottom, and that pushes the volume up to the top. And so when they first have it done, they're up like that. But then gravity works on them, and they settle. So you're basically you're tightening the skin at the bottom. And the reason you're tightening the skin at the bottom is because that's where you want the scars. You want the scars at the bottom. You want the scars on the nipple down. So the scars goes from the nipple down, tightening the skin at the bottom, and then that pushes the volume up. But as I say, it then settles to have a bit of a concavity in the upper pole, but a natural shape and lifted size. Um, are you able to do multiple procedures yet? And has surgery begun yet? Um, no. Are you able to do multiple procedures? No, uh, Cherry. The two, uh, the three-hour thing's still there. Um, and has surgery begun yet? No. Well, minor ops have at the clinic, but not GA stuff. They said that they might give us some dates at the end of this week. Will they? I don't know. Oh, God, I hope so. I'll tell you. It's stressful. Stressful. Putting more and more on the waiting list. Everyone's like, well, everyone's been great, by the way, and very understanding, but it is a bit stressful. I would be very happy to do some operating, to be honest with you. Uh, yes, it is. I help fit bras. Need to buy from Poland. I bet you do, Leonie. I bet you do. That's, um, yeah. 
So um, yeah, breast reduction, you need Leone. And if you want to know how it's done, uh, there might be a video of a breast reduction. Well, they, uh, never mind me. There's probably videos all over the place of YouTube, isn't there? What's this little one with a quick? Well, here we go. Do you always recommend having liposuction with tummy tucks? That is what happens when you click the questions. There comes a little thing like that. Wow. There now I know. So, so Melissa, oh, am I not supposed to say? Maybe I'm not supposed to say. Okay, I won't say because maybe she wants to be anonymous. Thank you for that. That was a question saying, do you always do liposuction with a tummy tuck? No. It was, what was the question? Do we recommend having to? No, not, necess oh, no, not necessarily. Um, you don't have to have a, a tummy tuck with a, uh, a liposuction with a tummy tuck. Um, you the, the the tummy tuck. I always think the value for money wise, the tummy tuck is the best is the most value for money because tummy tuck does the front bit and that's where the most of the problems is the front the front bit. Liposuction is good for the side bits, the bit the, if you put your hand on the side, the, the hips, the flanks, and that's where liposuction is really good at contouring those bits. And um, it's a nice thing to do to make the shape better and um but it is not um essential and not everybody needs it and the, the thing i normally say to people if you don't have liposuction i can't get to the sides so if you've got a bit of fullness of the sides that might remain often fullness of the sides help is helped by weight loss so that might help but um yeah not essential not essential to have liposuction that would be good um what is going on Michelle's lost 16 stone. I can't get over that 16 stone. I want my better than skin. Uh, can't, uh, maybe longer. Can't wait to lose my lawful. Maybe longer than usual. Oh God, what's that? I've lost track. What's, what's that? Longer than usual. Um, where are we up to? Olivia, it seems, it seems to be extra money. It's the Cypress surgeon. Oh, the extended thing. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, you better ask him, Olivia. Ask him what it is and let us know. Um, me too, Monday for me. Hello. Hi, Velma. Wow, Michelle, well done. I could, yeah, well done, Michelle. Awesome. Uh, well done, Michelle. Well done, Michelle. Michelle is a legend. Michelle, you're rocking it tonight. Kelly, if having a tummy tuck, is the pubic area also straightened out also? Straightened out? What do you mean straightened out? Do you mean like the bump in the pubic area? Like the mons? So, yeah, if there's a bit of a fullness in the mons, we can have a go at trying to flatten that off. I, I think that might be what you mean. Um, uh, we're limited in how much we can do. So if you've lost a significant amount of weight and you've got a very totic mons, if you've got a lot of, lot of skin on the mons, the mons is the bit of skin with your pubic hair on it. So if there's an awful lot of skin on the pubic hair on that in that area, a big bulge there, which you often don't see if you've got a big apron. So you have to lift up the apron and see if there's a big... Uh, bulge there then we're limited how much we can do there you can do a bit of liposuction you can take a bit of volume out like a slice of cake out but you can't take a huge amount out if you start taking a big amount out and start guddling down there and taking big amounts out you loosen up that area and the scar migrates up so uh, you end up with a scar that goes like that which isn't good so you're better off just doing a limited amount to the mons area or the pubic area limited amount to that area and uh, if it needs a lot of stuff done to come back later and do it so when the scar is anchored uh losing track of the chat chat is kicking off cherry m thank you another question when you do tummy tuck or fdl does this include muscle repair and mons lift muscle repair yes so a tummy tuck or, or FDL, which is fleur de -lis, for our viewers who don't know what FDL is. Um, yes. And uh, uh, Mons Lift is, yeah, what I was talking about, that bit in the Mons is the pubic area. And that is, um, I wouldn't say Mons Lift. No, it doesn't include a Mons Lift. It would include trying to contour the Mons a bit better. If the Mons is significantly totic or baggy, then uh, I wouldn't do... I, I wouldn't do a lot to the mons at the time of a tummy tuck. I would do the tummy tuck and say, look, you've got a bit of excess skin on the mons there. You might still have a bit of excess skin after the surgery. And if you are unhappy with that, then it would be possible to do to address that at a later date once the scar is anchored low in your abdomen. So, yeah, thanks for that, Cherry M. Uh, patata, patata. I accidentally broke a thick piece of glass by slamming it with my palm. It bled, but now it's stopped. 
my mum's angry on me, so basically abandoned me for the moment. Is it dangerous? We're straying into um, we're straying into to, 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 well, to different areas. Um, as a rule, patata, um, glass cuts the bone. As a rule, broken glass. Now, if uh, you did break it, so as a rule, broken glass cuts the bone. So uh, yes, you will. You may well have damaged some tendons, some arteries, some nerves. So yeah, a, a glass laceration to the palm, unless it's sort of like a glancing laceration. But um, but glass does cut cut deep. So um, it's probably worth um, seeking help, getting your mum back. Um, you've got to look if you can move all your fingers it's, if the sensation of your fingers is normal but yeah i think um a glass laceration to the palm is something that would may well need to be looked at um thanks for that question <laughs> um I hope that's helpful lisa right here we go thighs this is it we're getting back into uh, i wanted my thighs done before end of this year ready for my 50th next year as traveling world Round world, hopefully, and renewing vowels. You're renewing your vowels. Oh. Um, so, yes, that's a tricky one, Lisa, and I'm not sure if that would be possible, to be quite frank with you. Um, I would hope it is, and I'm saying to people that, uh, you know, see, people I'm seeing sort of now and today, I'm hoping we're going to be doing um, surgery on before the end of the year, but I don't know if we are. I don't know. In where are we now? In July, I was saying we are hoping to start in August. We're in August now, and we're not started. So, you know, are we going to start in September? I don't know. I hope so. Goodness me, I hope so. If we start in September, yes, I think it would be reasonable to think that as long as they can give us enough lifts. I don't know if they give us one list a month, then no. I don't know, Lisa, but I would say it's may well not be possible. Um, the problem is, I think, Lisa, no one knows. That's the thing. No one knows what's going to happen. Second wave and all this sort of stuff. That's the problem. When I Dan, Dan on the Instagram, Dan on Instagram, when I usually smile, my top lift covers my top teeth. Would a lip lift fix this and show my smile more? When I smile, my top lift covers my top teeth like that. <laughs> so a lip lift. <laughs> no, I'm not sure if it would a lip lift fix that. I'm not sure, Dan. I'm not sure if it would. I think it just makes your lip look fuller. <laughs> Not sure if it would. Um, Dan, I don't do lip lifts. Kuram does at the clinic and facial people do, but um, I don't do lip lifts. But I I think it just makes your lip look look a bit filler, uh, fuller. I don't think it lifts. I don't think it lifts your whole lip up so your teeth show more. I think it just rotates your lip to bring more of the red part of your lip outside. Yeah? You follow me? So I think the, the actual amount of your teeth that's shown is similar. But got to be honest, Dan, I'm not an expert. I'm straying into things that I'm I'm dabbling here. I'm dabbling. So um might be better to speak to Kurum. God, I mean, uh, I want to... Patata, fam, you're not answering me, and I'm losing power in my hand. Fam, what the hell? <laughs> Patata, Patata. If you need medical advice, if you need urgent medical advice, I would suggest that a Facebook Live is not the not the way to do it. I would suggest you call a doctor, um, to call your mum maybe to start with. And I don't think I'm I, I wouldn't rely on me to be helping you on this one, fam. So um, so good luck with that, Patata. Um, Olivia, is there any circumstance where, that you would do thigh lift and tummy tuck at the same time? Yes, there is, Olivia. Yes, that would be a reasonable combination. They're sort of next to each other, so they're good things to do. So like tummy tuck and arm lifts, a bit like, you've got to think of prepping and draping. You know, you've got to expose the whole body and you've got that bit in between, so you're going to get cold during the surgery. You've got to cover up bits. So a, fa a fan lift 
um, a, a, a thigh lift and a fam lift. A thigh lift and a uh, tummy tuck is a reasonable um, combination to do in one go. Yes, sorry, I tried to explain as much as I could. Thank you very much. What well, Kelly, I'm, I'm sorry, Kelly. I'm not sure where we are with you. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm, 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 I've got to be honest, I'm losing control here, but I'm a professional, so I'm going to... Anna, Facebook Live isn't an emergency service. Go to any. Listen to Anna. Potato, listen to Anna. It's not an emergency service. There are other people who are um, standing by to help people who have cut their hand. It's not, uh, it's not me. Right. <laughs> Chloe. Oh, God. Chloe, right. I'd like... I'd like to have a breast augmentation next year, but I am worried my chest will never look normal as I am a C cup one side and an A cup the other. My nipples are also slightly different. It's almost as if my left side never really developed. Is this something you would be able to correct with implants? Great question, Chloe. Great question. So, um, breast asymmetry is difficult, Chloe. No, no way about, no two ways about it. Breast asymmetry is difficult. And bottom line, I usually, well, I always say to people that they will probably be asymmetrical afterwards. Point one. Whatever you do, you're trying to get balance into the into the breast. And you got different levels of how far you go with an asymmetry um, in, according to your goals. So probably the, so the first thing to say is, are you happy with one? or other breast. If you're happy with one, then you might be able to just operate on the other one to reduce your risk of complications and try and balance things up. But by definition, you're gonna to have to do different things to the breasts because they're different now. So you're gonna to have to either put different sized implants in or do lifts on one and not the other or you know different things to, to the breasts. So there's always gonna be a risk of asymmetry. And also as you age, there's gonna be a risk that they may you know age differently. So, um, so the, 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 the simplest thing I guess would be if you're happy with the smaller one to be reduced the big one to match the smaller one. And that at the same time, that would bring the nipples level because you could do a reduction of the big one to match the smaller one. And that would bring the nipples level, not knowing any implants or anything like that. Um, and that, that would be sort of the simplest thing you're mentioning e implants so then presumably you want the smaller one to be bigger the a cup to be bigger so you could do an Im you could do implants so you could just do implants in your smaller breast put an implant in your smaller breast to match the the bigger breast to match the c cup that would be if it was the the, the bigger breast that you like that would be the simplest thing but as you've said the nipples are, are asymmetrical when you've got different sized breasts the bigger breast has got a lower nipple than the smaller breast so if you did that that would give you volume and symmetry in a bra. So I don't know if you're wearing an external prosthesis at the moment, if you're wearing something in your bra, that would avoid you having to wear anything in the bra. You'd be balanced in a bra, but when you take your bra off, uh, the, the C cup, the natural breast would droop, would sit lower than the implanted breast. So then you could think about lifting the, um, the, the C cup breast, the bigger breast, but that is more scarring and more um, more risks associated with that. But implants cannot change the height of the nipples. So if the one breast is sitting lower, you will need to lift that breast if you want to balance the nipple height. Um, uh, and then and then the other thing is, are you happy with the volume of the C cup? Because if you're not happy with the volume of the C cup, you could put bre implants in both breasts. And then you've got to say, right, well, am I going to put a bigger implant in the small breast or am I going to reduce the bigger breast to match the volume of the smaller breast and then put the same size implants in both as well as doing a lift to the bigger breast. I need a whiteboard, don't I? I definitely need a whiteboard. Has anyone followed that? Anyone? Anyway, Chloe, uh, what was the question? Uh, it's almost... Is this something you would be able to correct with implants? So yes, you could correct the, so in answer to the question, you could correct the volume with implants, either one implant in the small breast to try and match the volume of the big one. The implants come as set sizes, so it might not exactly match it, but we could get it more balanced. Or if you're still, if you're not happy with your C, then you could have two implants with obviously a bigger implant in your smaller breast, but it wouldn't do anything to the height of your nipples. If you wanted something onto your height of your nipples, you would have to have a lift 
of the C cup breast, of the bigger breast. Is that all right? That's where I'm. Lisa says, fingers crossed. Uh, Olivia, you looked like Anthony Hobson's in Silence of the Lambs with your de lip demo. Thank you, Olivia. That was, um, I'll take that. I was told to wait until next year as I've not long had a gastric bypass, was just, so was told to wait until I lose weight. However, I don't think it will affect my chest anyway. What's happened? God, lights went out. Um, as there's hardly anything there. You should wait until you've lost weight, Chloe, for two reasons. The lower your weight, the less your risk of complications, which is a significant reason. But also, you don't think you're going to lose weight off your chest, but it's unpredictable. You don't know. So I would... Why does that keep on going dark? Um, I would say to you that you should lose weight first to be stable platform before you... Um, have surgery. Lisa, I had to wait till my weight loss stabilized before any surgery. It is traditional, um, Lisa, not Lisa, Chloe, to um oops, to um wait until your weight wait until your weight is stabilized before having surgery. You're so funny. Uh Vilma Santos, I want I want to do mummy makeover but I put on weight during the lockdown, about 7 kg. My question is, will it be better if I lose weight first or can I do the surgery? How long after for me back to work? Vilma, you're always better losing weight first. As I say, your result will be better, your complications will be better, the risks will be less. Sorry, the complications will be less, the risk will be less. And also it's unpredictable what happens to your both your tummy and your breast um, with weight loss. So because it's unpredictable, you're better off losing weight first because you don't want to say, oh, nothing happens to my breast, and then you do a lift, and then you uh, the breast is a lot smaller when you've lost the weight. Uh, or you don't want to say, oh, my breast usually gets smaller, so therefore I'll leave them big, and then it doesn't get smaller. So it's unpredictable. You can't predict it. So you're better off doing it first so you're at a stable platform before having surgery. This is hard work, isn't it? Text on screen. Oh, no, not that one. It's that one. Recovery after thigh lift. Here we go. Are there usually drains after a thigh lift? Would you be catheterized? How much pain are you usually in after the first week? Another thigh lift question. Um, uh, this, this stuff differs with different people. So uh, full disclosure, this is my view and uh, views will differ between other surgeons. So I, yes, I usually do use drains for a thigh lift. Uh, and we don't like using drains these days. We're trying to use drains less and less in general, but for a thigh lift, I do use a drain. And, um, uh, but I don't send people home with a drain. I take it out before you go home. Would you be catheterized? So does everyone know what a catheter is? Do I have to explain that? So it's a tube in the bladder that means you don't have to pass urine uh, again different from person to person depends on the length of the surgery if you're having a long surgery then it you will be you may be catheterized so that they can keep an eye on your fluid balance and also so you're not bursting for the loo once you have finished the surgery personally for a thigh lift on its own i wouldn't routinely catheterize you um but if you're having a thigh lift with another operation uh, we might catheterize you if it's going to be a long op but after the uh, after the surgery, when you're in the recovery, because we've been giving you fluid during the surgery, because you often need the loo and you're quite, you know, uncomfortable because of the surgery, we will do what's called an in and out catheter, which means uh, in the recovery or immediately after the surgery, they'll put a catheter in your bladder to empty your bladder, and then you know don't not leave it there, just just do it in and out, um, so it's more comfortable for you, so you don't feel like you're bursting for the loo uh, once you finish the surgery. How much pain are you in after the first week? Yeah, absolutely. The first week is, is a bit uncomfortable, but hopefully pain's not too much of a thing. It's tight and uncomfortable uh, rather than pain. So we usually go with normal painkillers and, uh, and, um, and, and hopefully the pain's not too bad. Uh, one, one would hope. Um, what's going on here? With a breast reduction, when you when would you consider a nipple graft is necessary? Um, I try and avoid nipple grafts with a breast reduction personally. Again, some people will have a lower threshold to do a nipple graft than perhaps me. Um, uh, so, Cherry, the what you're looking at is the nipple uh, areola transposition. So the transposition means how far you're moving it. So you measure the sternal notch to the nipple 
and then you've got to think where you're going to put it. So you're usually putting the nipple between 22 to 25 centimeters, I guess, is where you're putting it. And so um, around 10 or really 15 centimeter transposition, you would think about doing a nipple, um, a free nipple graft. So basically, if your nipple is sitting around 40 centimeters, like 35, 40 centimeters, then now and you're going to move it up to sort of 25 then you would be thinking crikey that's a 15 centimeter transposition i'm moving it you know the dif difference in the from where it is to from where it is to where it goes is going to be you know 15 centimeters um that would be a significant transposition so basically so you measure you, you get your tape measure like so and if it's 40 centimeters which is pretty low so 40 centimeters is um, is here. So if you, if your nipples here, then because you, you usually move it up to sort of here, you know, anywhere between 20 and 25. So you move it in this sort of area. Um, there's mine. See, mine's mine's 21. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, so if it's 40, so anyway, that's that's how you think. But this is what I mean, Cherry, earlier on, you know, people getting into all the technicalities. Don't want me to talk too much about the technicalities of it, all right? It's just if it's very low, that's when you think about it, all right? So if the nipple's very low, you would think about a nipple graft. Um, how is the difference between large breast and gigantomastia? And is there a difference in the reduction of surgery? Gigantomastia is a term... Uh, that is used for large breasts and it's interchangeable with a large breast. It is a condition called gigant uh, gigantomastia where the breasts keep on growing and they really are. It's a it's a con it's a medical condition and it's very rare. And you sometimes actually have to do mastectomy, you have to remove the breast uh, to combat it. So usually large breasts uh, and gigant gigantomastia are uh, interchangeable terms, just meaning large breasts. And true gigantomastia is a uh, is a medical condition which uh, is uh, you know is significant, and you might need a mastectomy. But most people, it's just a breast reduction that you'd be thinking of. Um, and people with gigant gigantomastia, you do the breast reduction, and the breasts grow large again. So it's that's why you have to think about removing all of the breast tissue, which is a bit extreme. What is going on here? I uh, yes, I love you, may love, says the Queen. Thank you very much. She's very kind. I'm 43 years old. I've had a hysterectomy last November with a smooth recovery. They couldn't do it laparoscopic as there was too much scar tissue. Would I be okay to have a tummy tuck? And if so, how long after hysterectomy do I wait? Thanks. Um, hi, Haley. Absolutely fine. And the scar for the hysterectomy would be removed. So hysterectomy, cesarean, all these sorts of scar. If you've got a, a lower abdominal scar, so-called phalan steel scar, scar in your lower abdomen above the pubic hair, these scars are removed when you do a tummy tuck and you'd be absolutely fine. And I would wait a minimum of six months. When did you? Last November. So, yeah, you're, you're there, aren't you? And if you're feeling up to it, then you could have the um, tummy tuck whenever. Well, I say that. We can't do it at the moment, but assuming we could do it. Um, yeah. Uh, Kelly, I've had three C-sections. With, with Will that affect my end result of a tummy tuck? And also, is the pain similar to both tummy tuck and a c-section so that's uh no it won't affect it kelly because a bit like the cesarean a bit like the um hysterectomy we go below the cesarean scar or below the hysterectomy scar below your existing scar so that scar is excised so you have to cut through that scar tissue but it won't affect your results so you'll get a fresh scar in a similar place but just slightly below where your current scar is and what was the other question the pain we had a debate about this once about whether it would c-section and can I do a poll? Can I do a poll on this? That'd be good, wouldn't it? Can I do a poll on Instagram? Oh, I should look at the features. We can do a poll. What's worse, a C-section or a tummy tuck? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Widgets. Oh, thermometer. Sticky notes. I uh, don't want that. Um, that would be good if I could do a poll, wouldn't it? Cancel. Guest. No, I don't think I can do a poll. Oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Shall I do a Facebook post with a poll? I'll do that. I'll do a Facebook post. Because you can do post. Make a note. I'll do a poll, Kelly. I think it's similar. I think it's similar. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's similar. A cesarean section, you cut through the muscle, which hurts. Every time you cough and everything, it hurts. But you're not cutting any skin out. Whereas a tummy tuck, you're cutting a big bit of skin out, so it's closed really tight, but you're not cutting any muscle, although you often repair the muscle. Like, you know, you bring the muscles together. So you do put stitches in the muscle, but you're not actually cutting through the muscle. So I think it balances itself out. And I seem to think last time the cesarean was a, maybe a little bit worse, but I don't know. We'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a poll on that, Kelly. Let's get scientific on it, and we'll have the results for you next week, if I remember, which I probably won't. But anyway, watch this space. I'll do the poll tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah um chloe thank you very much i'm very small on top so would like implants as even the bigger breast isn't even a handful nipples are different sized so was more wondering if they would be able to correct that with the implant and uplift yes so chloe you probably sounds like chloe you need a, an, an implant and an uplift on the um uh, on the bigger breast and maybe just an implant on the smaller breast that's probably where i'm going different type of scarring on both sides but you're going to have different things as i say whatever but yeah, implant and uplift. Uh, the uplift would change the size of the nipple and also the height of the nipple, and then uh, uh, an, an implant in the other side to match the volume. And then you've got to think about what you do in terms of volume of implants, whether you go for different size volume of implants or whether you go for a reduction of the big breast and aim for the same size implants. Six of one, six and two threes, six and three, two threes, Chloe. Something to discuss with your surgeon. Um, if your breast is very small, then it probably be worth going for a differential augmentation because you don't want to take loads of volume out of the bigger breast. Um, so probably go for different sized implants, but you know, just my view. You have to talk to your surgeon about that. Uh, God, I'm, I'm neglecting Instagram. Sorry, Vilma. Vilma, I'll come back. Vilma, Vilma, hold that thought. What's going on here? How do you tell the difference in like, I've done that. I am at it. Melissa. Uh, oh, there's not much going on. Oh, will you post this to your grid? My friend will be interested in watching this. Uh, I don't know, Melissa. How do I post it to my grid? Um, I think it does, actually. I think it automatically goes there, doesn't it? I think it automatically goes there. If you look back at my grid, have I got my ones? I do this every week, Melissa. So if, if the ones from last week are at my grid, uh, then I will. If they're not, then I won't. But if you help me, I'll do it. I'll, I don't know. I'll, I think it goes there automatically, Melissa. I've had tummy tuck. I'm in week three and my belly button hurts. Um, you're, yes, folks. Yeah. So is that a statement, Rose, or is that Rose Fuzz Pop? So, yeah. Th yeah. Three weeks is early days, Rose. Early days. Um, Leone, it goes up automatically. That means the post, does it? There you go. Thank you, Leone. Um, so, Velma. Abdominoplasty recovery, abdominoplasty recovery can be more or less compared to C-section? Question mark. Is that that's what we're going to do the poll on, Vilma? Don't preempt it. I hope it's not more or less the same because that's not going to make the poll very good, is it? Um, if I ever meet you, I'll constantly think of your twenty-one centimeter nipple. <laughs> twenty-one centimeters is normal, Kelly. It's a normal position for nipple. Thanks, JJ. Um, yeah, perhaps I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have got personal. I regret that. But that's live TV for you. What can you do? Um, that's excellent news. Thank you so much for your advice. What was the news? Was it about the hysterectomy? Oh, yes. Yeah, good news. Thanks, Haley. JJ, my uplift and implants and my Cypress surgeon did my tummy tuck. JJ is fab. I'm six year post surgery with great results. That's what we want to hear. Thank you, Elaine. You know what, Elaine? That's such a good comment. I put it in twice, and you have. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear that, everyone? For the, for you on Instagram, um, Elaine saying that I'm fab. Uh, good news, Elaine. Glad that everything's good. Chloe, thank you very much. Um, uh, next question, please. Next slide, please. Would arm lift? Uh, what? Where are we up to, guys? I want an arm reduction surgery. I've done that one, have I? Yeah. Here we go. I've been told I have an osteoma. Can you explain? I'm well out of sync on these questions. I don't know. Can you explain what it is and the procedure to remove it? So an osteoma is a bony lump, basically. It's a lump of bone and it can occur anywhere where you've got a bone. It's a it's an outcropping of the bone. So you can you can get it on any bone. The place the place where we see, and I common see it is here, I had a couple here. Um, I'm not sure that I was supposed to do one tomorrow, but we had to cancel it because we couldn't get a chisel, which is a bit. Um, anyway, 
don't yeah that's that's my problems um um so it's a it's a bone it's an outcropping of bone it's usually a benign tumor <clears throat> so it is a tumor but it's benign i.e not cancerous nothing to worry about but it can be a nuisance because it's a bit of bone that sticks out and if it can catch on things if it's in certain parts of the body and here it can be a bit unsightly and the thing about them here is they're difficult to remove so you need a little hammer and chisel if you have the right instruments it's it's um relatively straightforward local anesthetic you can take it off um and uh yeah so that's what an osteoma is, bony lump. Um, ah, here we go. Would an arm lift? Here we go. Here we go. Would an arm lift remove stretch marks I have at the back of my arm? Do you answer on your Tuesday night lies on Facebook and Instagram? I've attached photos. Sorry if you've had to wait for this one because um, I was very pleased to have the photos. So here's the photos, guys, because uh, this patient has allowed me to show the photos. So this is the photos. This, these, these are the photos. So, um, oh, you can't see it, can you? So, um, can you see that? It's not very professional, is it? No, it's not very professional. Sorry. Anyway, those are the photos. I don't know if there's a better way of showing them on Instagram. Um, so it's not too, it's not too, but the point, the point I'm trying to show is, uh, I don't know if you can, I don't know actually, is it's not too bad. There's a, there's a bit of stretch marks there. Can you see them? But it's not too bad. That, don't, sorry. That's rubbish, isn't it? Sorry, Instagram. Is that rubbish? Mm, okay. We're, we're learning guys. We're learning. I have to reflect on that but anyway the point is it's it's thank you for letting me show the photos but it's not too bad so there are some stretch marks so for for my facebook um people there are some stretch marks but um they're they're, they're quite high up here they're, they're back here and i think an arm reduction would be um would be quite a big thing to take on because what i can do oh yeah I can show you, I think, um, I can show you a, uh, my arm reduction, can I? Um, um, so uh, an arm reduction gives you quite a long scar is the bottom line. Um, so uh, this patient doesn't have a huge amount of skin. So um, I, I, it, the answer is it would remove those stretch marks there, uh, but she doesn't have a huge amount of excess skin on her arm. So I would not sure if I'd be recommending um, having a uh, an arm reduction simply because the scars, sorry, I can't get it on the slide view, this oh, click to our title looks a bit naff, doesn't it? Let's get that out of the way. The scars, um, you can see the scars. Uh, uh, sorry, the scar, the scar. You can see it when you lift your arm up. This is a scar for an arm reduction. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Can you see my mouse? Anyway, um, so it's before this photo shows before and after an arm reduction. Uh, so it does in, it does reduce the size of the arm, but this lady's arm is a little bit bigger, and uh, the scar is a little bit obvious, and it goes all the way down to the elbow. So for me, and it's not my body, but for me, this patient's arm is not, I don't think that is worth taking on the risk of a scar reduction, my, uh, an arm reduction myself. But it, as I say, it's not my arm, um, although it would uh, remove the, um, it would remove the, the stretch marks. Also, it might affect this tattoo a bit. It might, I'm not sure it might not, but it might affect the tattoo a bit. Uh, the patient's asking if she can get the scar tattooed, which she might be able to. The scar would be here in the sort of neutral position of the arm. Let me see here and here. Is that is that helpful? I, I love showing photos, so thank you very much for allowing me to show you photos. And I hope... Oh, God, what's happened to Instagram? Oh, God, I've kept my eye off the ball. <laughs> Sorry, Instagram. I kept my eye off the ball. What happened? Sorry. Just went, I was too engrossed in my photos. Um... 
Le oh, poor Lisa says, oh, what's going on? Everyone's leaving me. It's lit ended. Lisa says, thank you. Look forward to speaking. Are you off then? Um, okay. Lisa's off. I'll see you tomorrow, Lisa. Get a good night's sleep. Um, so, sorry, I'm just doing my, my Instagram. Sorry, it's 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 stop the Instagram. Stop just got just talk much yourselves, guys. Talk much yourself. Oh, it's kind of kicking off outside now. Um, right. Um, so Olivia, uh, you're nearly an hour. Yeah, I've just finished. Here we go. This is what we need a question. That's what we need. We need a cover. Kelly, do you use dissolvable stitching or staples for a tummy tuck? Personally, Kelly. And again, this is just me, and I know everyone's different. I use stitches. Let's get, let's get Instagram. Instagram's going, what on earth is he doing out there? Honestly. Um, oh, I'll answer anyway. Won't wait. I use uh, dissolvable sutures for a uh, tummy tuck. I don't use staples, but I know that people do use staples. I mean, the good thing about staples is um, that it's quicker. I mean, and, and quicker is good because you reduce your time in surgery. But um, I prefer to use dissolvable sutures. And uh, so you don't have any sutures to remove. You might see sutures around your belly button, but uh, they dissolve uh, as well. So um, here we go. So, um, nice result like that. So, uh, yep, that's where I am with that. Dissolvable sutures all day long. So, um, what have we got, guys? No, we've done that, arm lift and tattoos. Here we go. Here we go, back on track now, back on track. It's ended on Instagram, but it started again because I've only got an hour on Instagram. So I've, I've started it again. So, um, so I'm back. Do you advise patients to take Arnica before surgery? What are your views on this? So my views on this are that I don't advise patients to take Arnica prior to surgery because in my experience, oh, the thing about Arnica, they say that Arnica is good for bruising. And some people are quite um, strong about it and like, oh, it's, you know, it's great and it's some kind of magic, you know, really good thing. And so that is fine. And they might take the Arnica and say, look, I have no bruising at all fact of the matter is often there is not there is little or no bruising anyway so because bruising is not normally a significant problem with liposuction perhaps it is um, more so but it's not a significant problem so I don't routinely tell everyone to take Arnica as far as I'm aware there's nothing bad about taking Arnica I don't know of any bad things so um, if you want to take Arnica that is fine but I don't routinely advise patients to take Arnica um, because bruising is not normally a big issue with um, with with the surgery that I do, but if you want to take Arnica, then it's fine. Uh, that's fantastic news. With staples, they feel so awful afterwards. Yeah, I think people don't like staples. Uh, from which country are you are? I am in the UK, United Kingdom, uh, in Birmingham. So uh, yeah, United Kingdom is the country that I'm in. Leone, do you wear, wear tape over scars after surgery? Like after a C-section, I had to wear for one week, one for a week. No, Leone, I don't do tapes. I love the tapes. I do tapes for the first week. Oh, sorry. Yeah, for the first week. Yeah. Oh, for the first week. Yeah, you would have, you would have well, dressings. Obviously, you have uh, steri strips and uh, dressing for the first week. But then after the first, some people tape them for a long time afterwards, but I don't. I just do it for the first week. Um, Olivia, I bought Arnica tabs with me. Sage tea is a good anti-inflammatory and wound healing. Quarantine Hotel has sage tea, so I'm stocking it up. Well, that's, yeah, go for it. Go for it. As I say, some people do think it is good. And um, who am I to say anything different? Um, you know, it may well be a good thing. Uh, where am I doing? What am I doing? Agenda. Um, uh, do you vote? Sorry. 
What does it mean for a surgeon to be board certified? This is a good question. So um, board certified is an American term, and it's an American term to say that your surgeon is fully trained. And I, to be honest, I think they've, they've done a good thing with that, calling it board certified, because it sounds good. It's easy to remember. If you go to any of the American forums, they'll say, make sure your surgeon's board certified, board certified, board certified. You know, I'm a board certified plastic surgeon. It just sounds good. Um, unfortunately, in the UK, we have a similar thing, but it doesn't sound as good as saying board certified. And the equivalent, the, the nearest equivalent of it, of, uh, of it in the UK will be FRCS Plast. So that would be a fully qualified plastic surgeon who has passed the equivalent of the board exams in America, which is our FRCS Plast exam, which is an exit exam that you have to take before you are a fully qualified plastic surgeon. And then you get those letters after your name, FRCS Plast. Let's not forget this guy's written a book on it. Okay, this guy right here has written a book. So, um, yeah, FRCS Plast. Yeah, this FRCS Plast guy. Um, so, in the UK, it will be FRCS Plast, but it doesn't sound as good, does it? Look, look for your surgeon to be FRCS Plast. Doesn't sound as good as look for your surgeon to be board certified. But anyway, it's the equivalent of being FRCS Plast in the UK, and it means you finished your training and you're a fully trained specialist rather than just a, a you know, a, just got a medical degree. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people in the UK and in the USA who are providing surgery, doing surgery, there's nothing illegal about it, um, who are not board certified plastic surgeons, who are not fully tra tra trained plastic surgeons. Kanye West's mum, Donda West, uh, I think she died having a tummy tuck, I think it was. She had some surgery and her surgeon was not board certified. She was Kanye West's manager. Um, so clearly not looking for the cheapest. Um, and I would imagine they thought that they were being treated by a board certified plastic surgeon, but their surgeon was not uh, board certified. And I believe I'm right in also saying that um, Usha, Usha's wife had liposuction and I think she got a DVT. She just had a child and she went to Brazil, did she? Anyway, her surgeon was, I can't remember where she went to be honest. Uh, anyway, her surgeon wasn't board certified either. So there's lots of high profile cases in the UK. We have got um, Colin Henry, the footballer, his wife had abdominal liposuction and subsequently died and his, his, her surgeon wasn't a fully trained plastic surgeon. Um, so there's lots of high profile cases of people who have come to harm and subsequently realized their surgeon wasn't fully trained. So that's why we go on and on about saying, make sure your foot surgeon's fully trained. And in America, they just say board certified because that sounds good. In the Eng England, we say, make sure they're FRCS Plast, which doesn't sound quite so good. Make sure they have or have held an NHS consultant post, things like that. It's like, mm, it's not so easy to, to, to sort of wrap your tongue around, is it? But that's what it is. Um, what is going on in the chat here? Do you have to wear tape? I bought Arnica tabs. It tastes like sage and onion stuffing. Very odd taste, sage tea. Beautiful. I am also from the UK, but this UK is in India. Is it UK in India? Wow. Um, India. Show your book. I did. I did show my book, Kim. Yeah, thank you. Visit our place once. You will feel good. Okay, UK and India. There you go, guys. Visit UK and India. Apparently, we've got to do that. Do you uh, do you have pictures of your work on this page? Uh, what on Facebook? Mm, not much, do I? Don't think I have much on Facebook. I've got some on Instagram and the website as well. There's some on the website, uh, Kelly. But it's a bit hard to find on the website. We need to redo the website. I think it's about halfway down. It says view examples of our work. A bit too fancy for its own good, isn't it? But there is definitely some there. I've uh, been trying to get to India. I ran when he came to your video. So I thought, let's invite you. Thank you. Now I'm not going to disturb you by this kind. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Nice. Thanks for coming. You're very welcome. And we hope to visit UK and India sometime. Um, <laughs> This that is the reach. I mean, did you guys not realize 
how much of a social influencer I am. I don't know if you guys are all from UK and things. I have got reach in the UK and India. Okay, these people all around the world are watching this. I mean, I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say this guy right here is world famous. I don't think that would be an exaggeration. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't think I get enough respect. To be quite frank, clearly it's um, you know it's clear for all to see how you know how. I've got four people on Instagram, for God's sake. I've got 14 or nine or anyway, almost double figures. I mean, come on. What more do you want? I've got all, well, add it together. It is double figures, right, between the two. I mean, double figures of viewers. That is the sort of reach we want. Yeah, four. Yeah, thank you, Rose Fuzz Pop. Four on my live. Te well, actually, 10 now on, Inst on Facebook, all right? So I think you'll find that makes 14. Okay, 14 people from all over the world. Okay, world, this is going out to UK and India, all over the world. So that is what happens when you're an influencer. Thank you, right? Um, so, um, what's going on? Cyprus, India, in all over the shop. What the only. Is there a way for us to check our surgeons' qualifications online or reviews? I'm looking at two clinics in Glasgow, ATM, at the moment, I think. But do worry in case I went with someone who was not fully trained. Who is it? Who is it, Leone? Tell me, and I'll tell you. Um, I, I will, I'll probably do, I'll tell you anyway. Um, yes, there is, Leone. Well, first of all, look for FLCS Plast after their name. That's the easiest thing. But you go to GM. It's not very easy to do. That's the problem, Leone. You go to the GMC website, which is GMC dash uk dot org i think it is so you go to the gmc website and it says check your doctor's qualifications if you know their gmc number and we're all encouraged to give out our gmc number four double one seven two one four that is my gmc number four double one seven two one four uh but if you've got a name like styano you you know you just put in the name so if they've got a funny name then you then you're okay but if it's like john smith you might be in trouble but um put in the gmc number or put in their name and then have a look and it'll be a little line and it says on the specialist register so first of all you want to make sure they're on the specialist register um and then you want to make sure they're on the specialist register for plastic surgery and it'll say when they were put on the specialist register so if they're not on the specialist register then they're just a doctor they haven't finished their specialist training or they might be on the GP register if they're a GP. So that is the way to do it, but it is not very easy, unfortunately. That is one of the problems, and that is why you can understand why people see a surgeon who looks the part in a nice flash clinic and turns out they're not trained. So hey ho. They are missing out, Rose Fuzz Pop. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, Rose Fuzz Pop, I don't know if I could handle much more than this. I'm on the ragged edge with 14 people. So I don't think I could handle much more of a <laughs> of a reach. Um, I heard everyone goes to Turkey because they cheap. I could never do that. Yes, I think you're right. Why is Turkey famous for nose jobs? Uh, is it Turkey, Rose Fuzz Pop, or is it um, Iran? I thought it was Iran. Am I right? Um, anyway, yes, I, I think there is, yeah, there is places in the world which are famous for certain, certain things. Um, and I thought it was Iran was famous so for nose jobs. Noses are not my thing. And if you want a nose done, go to someone who does noses because it's not something you want to dabble in. Um, but I think they're just famous. These certain countries are famous for it because they do a lot of them. Um, I, I think every story of, um, what is going on here? Uh, of course, I'm also UK GB in Cyprus. See what you I like the little things. World domination, absolutely. Tamia, Tamia from Lebel form or Dan from because I can't smell the surnames on the top. Tamia is Tamia Shoeb, and Tamia is a most certainly a fully trained plastic surgeon. I know him well, and he's a lovely guy, and he will look after you. Uh, I don't know Dan from Cosmetic Care. I don't know what. Uh, Dan, I don't know who that is, but Tamia, I can vouch for Tamia. So um, uh, I know him and he is a good guy. So um, yeah, I'm not sure about Dan. I feel bad if I do know Dan, if you say his surname, but anyway. Melody, I've been told not to, I've been told and to stay away from Poland, but Lithuania good and Brussels for boobs. 
Okay. Okay, well, there you go. Stay away from Poland. Lithuania are good and Brussels for booze. Okay. I don't I can't comment. I don't know, Melody. You probably know better than me. Turkey is famous for hair implants, apparently. Well, there you go. Hey ho. Who who knew? Who knew? Um where are we up to? What does it mean? But uh, we've done that. Last question. Whew. Last question. Um how long unless you come up with something because i'm very happy to answer anything that you come up with you um oh two and 11 people still it's all right it's not right. um how long will i need off work um to recuperate after breast augmentation surgery depends what you do who's asked this oh it's um, one of mine uh depends what you do um Basically, first week, you're not going to want to do much. Second week, you'll be doing desk work. If you run your own business, if you do stuff from home, you'll probably be working, doing bits and bobs the second week. After the second week, um, you will probably be able to drive and things like that, but you'll feel a bit uncomfortable. So you can gently get into stuff after the second week. Again, if you're doing walking is good, the stepper is good, the exercise bike is good, that sort of stuff after the second week. And then gently, gently start and see how you go. But nothing with your body, nothing with your arms, with your upper body, nothing too strong, like jogging either, nothing high impact for probably at least a month, four to six weeks. And even then, I would say to um, ease into it and listen to your body. If it swells, if it hurts, back off. But four to six weeks before anything too strenuous. So first couple of weeks, nothing, and then after a couple of weeks, gently doing things, and then four to six weeks for strenuous things, and then just ease it in. You really feel like you're getting there around three months. It does take a few months to feel like you're sort of normal again, and it does take a while for everything to settle. Is it Dan Marsh? Dan Marsh, I do know. He is a fully trained plastic surgeon, and he is not. He's in London, Dan Marsh. He's not up in Glasgow. I'd stay away from Turkey. That's Olivia's words. So, so many hair implants in turkey lurky okay um uh dan dan widowson is the cosmetic surgeon i'm looking at tamia so that's great to know he's fully trained um i don't you do know what the problem is leone i do know mo uh, uh, many plastic surgeons the problem is because i've been sort of out of it or you know not out of it sounds bad but there's a lot of new surgeons who've come through so I know people who are my, so Tamia is my sort of um, generation, I suppose, generation a bit. So they, they're, they're probably are some new guys coming through who I maybe don't know who are fully trained. So I can tell you if they're fully trained, if I know them, but I don't know Daniel, da or Dan, is it Daniel? Daniel Wooderson. So just look for FRCS Plus to offer his name. And I don't know what cosmetic care is. I don't know what that is. That's, but I do know Tamia and I do know Labelle Form. That's his clinic. And I do know he's a good guy. Daniel might be a good guy as well, but I don't know him. Kelly, I received a quote from Beauty in Prague, but recently I've joined a page and they are on a botched list. I feel so lucky, but I've had two friends go and they love these results. It's so scary for me going abroad. It is scary, Kelly. The whole thing's scary and it just going abroad just makes an extra level of scariness. But um, yeah, it's a scary business. On that note, people, um i think um it's been a good one thank you all and it's good to know that my worldwide influence is still strong and uh i will see you all at the same time seven o'clock next week but oh, hold on a minute it's, it's holiday next week um i might i might be going i think i am yeah i'm not going to be here next week sorry guys i know i know I know it's hard to, I know it's hard to, thank you, Khan. It's hard to cope, but I will maybe the week after, but then I'm holiday for two weeks or maybe the week after that. But in the next three weeks, I will see you, but probably not all next week. It might be in a few weeks. Thank you, Jackie. I wish I could like your comment, but you can't do that. In fact, I can't like anything. Can I, I can just put it on the screen? Um, Olivia, this traveling is a massive hassle right now. 24 hours to Cyprus. 24 hours to Cyprus, is it? Melissa Jane Tucker waving right back at you. Thank you for all your answers. Well, thank you for your questions. Couldn't have done it without your questions, Kelly. And I will see you all. Um, 
So no worries. Olivia won't be there next week either. I will see you all in the next week or so. Thank you all for your participation. Couldn't have done it without you, mate, this show. <laughs> right, I'm going to check out. Lucky you. Have a great time. Thank you, Melody. Well, I hope so. It's all a bit weird with all this lockdown thing. I don't know. Well, feels a bit weird. Don't want to go out, do you? I don't, anyway. Okay, take it easy, Instagram Live. I'm going to end it by pressing this button here. Oops, sorry, my thumb's there. I do want to end it. And Facebook, I'm going to end it by pressing this button here. Take it easy. Thank you, Olivia.